Here at Iconic Motorbikes, we get to ride and service all kinds of motorcycles. So I always find it fascinating to know and learn more about what our team rides as their daily commuters. Well, this is Steve's 2016 Yamaha XSR 900. You all know Steve. I sometimes call him the professor. He runs the shop here. Steve, why do you love this bike? I'll tell you what. Let me, uh, let me make sure people can hear let, you. Let, let's just say it always surprises me. Okay. I bought it as a commuter bike and, and found out that it, it's way more than just that. It actually, I've done track days on it, which is amazing. It's just a really good all around bike. Fantastic. And I've seen you rip many wheelies on this thing. I know you uh, love the comfort now and, and then. perform every once in a while, <laughs> every once in a while in strict supervised conditions. Of course. But yeah, I think safety you, first, safety first. That's right. <laughs> and you and I were talking about how it kind of allows you to be comfortable and upright, but still kind of be a, an older hooligan. Yeah. Is that fair? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not young, you know, it's just like, it, it's hard for me to be in a, in a, in a tuck yeah. for any more than a couple of minutes. So we, okay. we, this allows me to sit up straight and still enjoy riding. Perfect. Well, Steve, I've got some good news for you because Yamaha has just released the new 22 version of your XSR 900. Ooh, I like it. Glad to hear. Well, I'll tell you what, Yamaha just took me to Ventura so I could try it for myself. And just like that, I'm in Ventura, California. So let's get right into it. I want to tell you what's good, what's bad, and what's iconic about the new Yamaha XSR 900. And we'll see if Steve approves of this new bike. First, what's good? Uh, look, this isn't just a paint job. There's a whole range of changes here. If I had to estimate, we're talking about 90% of this is, is a new bike compared to the XSR 900, the previous generation. Now with that said, if you're really a fan of Yamaha and you've been following what they're doing, a lot of what I'm about to tell you is gonna be very similar to the upgrades that came to the MT-09 last year, which this bike is kind of a sibling or a twin of. Uh, we'll get into all the details. So like I said, it's mostly new, engine, uh, swing arm, subframe, suspension, and I'm gonna get into a lot of that. The written review will have full details if you're really looking for the specifics, but I'm just gonna cover some highlights in the next couple of minutes. Uh, I do wanna start with the paint. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous bike. All of the pieces that are painted here, the fender, the side cover, the tank, uh, it is admittedly screaming from a rear, for a real rear cowl and probably also a belly pan, but anything that's painted on this bike, I have to say, looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, the previous generation of the XSR, a lot of their paint job choices were based on 70s bikes, even uh, like, the, for example, I'll show you an example of a green uh, XSR that looks a lot like the XS650 from the 70s. For this update, they've gone to the 80s. This is specifically a tribute to Christian Charon's 250 GP racer uh, back with, and I apologize, I'm gonna butcher this in advance, uh, Galoz, Gal I don't know. You're, you'll correct me in the comments and I apologize for it, but it was a really iconic uh, livery and uh, I'll even show you a photo of uh, V and I on a, a YSR 80, another Yamaha, in this same paint job because it really has been a good one for them historically. The finish is fantastic. It's a little overcast now, but earlier today we were in the sun and when the sun hits this paint, it looks truly beautiful. On top of that, we've got the general updates that, that we're seeing. So from a suspension standpoint, uh, the front and the rear, so the forks and the shock, are gonna be the stiffer spring rates, higher compression, a little bit less rebound actually to compensate for that. And anyone that's ridden the previous XSR will understand why that's a good thing. Uh, it is much more composed, it is much more refined and, and easier to ride and to go fast in. It really is, it just handles a lot better than the previous bike. One of the best parts about this platform has always been the CP3 engine. And in this uh, implementation, it is now up displacement wise to 890. Uh, Yamaha USA doesn't quote horsepower figures. If I had to guess, you're talking about roughly 115. Uh, but they do say that now torque is up 6% and impressively gas mileage is up 11% as well. Uh, so the drivetrain on this is absolutely fantastic. It really is a very good motor. Uh, and transmission pairing. Other companies do triples in different ways. Everyone's got their specialties. I'd say that the Yamaha, they're kind of focusing more on the top end. It doesn't make that much power until you're hitting four or five K, but there's even a setting in the tachometer so that you can, you can turn colors on. And once you hit about five or five and a half, the tack itself lights up green. It's basically telling you it's making max power and it's the best time to do a wheelie. 
Uh, other upgrades are going to be in the brakes. Uh, you've got a Brembo master uh, cylinder up top. Uh, there's Advix calipers uh, on, the, on the wheel itself. And then there's all kinds of extra goodies here, whether it's ranging from the drive modes, there's now four modes instead of three, and you actually can tell a difference. If you're just commuting around, I think two is the happy medium between being smooth and still giving you max power. You've got a TFT dash, uh, you've got all kinds of other goodies. Uh, and what I found is, from like a fit and finish standpoint, there's some interesting things that Yamaha is doing here. For example, uh, this is the first time in recent memory that they're using bar end mirrors from the factory. But on the negative side of things, it's a little odd because uh, the stock mirror mount on the left side is still there, it's just been plugged up. So there's a couple of odd choices, and to be fair, uh, the bike does cost $9,999, so there's gonna be a little bit of concessions here and there. But um, there's lots of great pieces from a fit and finish standpoint. The top of the four caps are milled out and they, they've got the little speed hole thing going. Uh, there's an XSR plaque on the top of the triple tree. And there's uh, lots of uh, additional aluminum details uh, that make it stand out. It really is an interesting styling choice versus something like the MT-09. But like I said, before, as I mentioned before, a lot of the painted bodywork looks fantastic to me. Some of the, the, the frame and the wiring and the hoses, I think just feels a little bit, a little bit sloppy. Uh, another thing in the what's bad category for me, uh, it's, it's borderline, but it's gonna be the suspension. Now, the suspension has been highly, highly upgraded from the previous bike, uh, but it still feels like, uh, you know, I'm 6'2", I'm 200 pounds, uh, it's going to be different for every every person, every rider, every weight. I just I would like just a little bit more compression and uh, out of the shocks. To be fair to Yamaha, the suspension is fully adjustable up front, and then the shock is going to be adjustable for preload and rebound. But I would like to just have a little bit more out of the suspension there. Lastly, what's iconic about this bike? And in previous reviews when I've talked about what's iconic, it doesn't necessarily mean what is the truly standout or the best feature about it. It's more about what's the takeaway from it. And I think what's important to understand about this bike is that Yamaha has now, Yamaha has now given it a different feel, especially compared to the MT-09. So in the previous generation, you had the MT-09, you had the XSR 900, and they were very much similar except for the styling. The XSR was kind of the neo-retro sibling uh, to the MT-09, which kind of looks like a robot alien. Um, I do think the MT-09 is a lot of fun. I don't find it to be very attractive, and that's why I find this to be very interesting because I, do, I, I think it's a great looking bike. Uh, but what is different now is uh, specifically between the MT-09 and the XSR 900, the swing arm and the subframe. Now the subframe is different for obvious reasons. You've got this different seat. Uh, again, hopefully there'll be a cowl uh, option for it soon. But what's more important, I think, to call out is gonna be the swing arm. The swing arm is 59 millimeters longer than the previous generation's almost two inches. Uh, it is actually the swing arm from the Tracer 9 GT, which is their touring bike. And so that's a conscious decision by Yamaha, obviously. What they're trying to do is a couple of things. They're trying to make it more stable in corners. It, it really does handle better. It's a much better bike to rail around a corner than the old bike or even the current MT-09. The trade-off is gonna be it's a little less, I'm not gonna say exciting, but it is definitely a little less fun in my opinion. It is objectively a better bike, but I do think it's a little more, it's, it's, it's more refined and it's, it's a little less rowdy <laughs> like the other 900s were. Uh, one of the easiest examples to point out is gonna be that it's, it's just harder to wheelie. The old bike, if you just got on the throttle, it didn't really matter what you were doing and what the situation was, the front wheel wanted to lift. Now with the longer swing arm and other changes, including an incre like increased flywheel mass and, this, and that kind of thing, it makes it harder to wheel it. It still does it, but it's a little bit harder. Uh, and so that to me is the key here. If you were a previous owner of an XSR 900 like Steve, it's a different bike. It, the characteristic is different, and I'm curious to hear what his thoughts will be in just a couple of minutes. Uh, if you're cross shopping this versus an MT-09, uh, you're probably gonna swing this way because of the styling but you should also understand that because of the longer swing arm, it actually does handle better. So it, it, it's a better performing machine that probably you know, does a decent job uh, honoring the tribute racer that the paintwork implies. Um, if you're looking for something that's a little bit crazier, 
uh, the M209 is gonna be your best bet. But uh, at the end of the day, it is a fantastic offering at that price point I mentioned of $9,999. It is currently available at your local Yamaha dealership. Uh, check out the written review for all of the additional details that I didn't have time to get into now. And uh, let's go back to Santa Monica and see what Steve thinks. All right, my friend, you've had a chance to ride this bike for yourself now. What do you think? I am very impressed. All it's, right. it, it, it's all the bells and whistles are there. Everything is the way I like it. You know, seat height is lower. I can actually reach the ground almost. Uh, everything is symmetrical. It's in the center of the bike as opposed to everything being off center, like on the older version, which okay. that always just, I never felt like I was sitting in the middle. You know, that, the shifting, the power. Okay. It's, it's so much better. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's it's, excellent. Now, you and I were debating this earlier. What color would you get it in? Black. See, I love you. Or excuse me, ra you. Raven. You're a, okay, oh, well done. Correct marketing term. Yep. But still horribly wrong. Blue <laughs> is the way to go by far. Look at this. But either way, the point is, are you going to buy one? Yep. You get Steve's vote of endorsement. You should seriously look at this as well. Like I said earlier, currently in your dealerships, available in Raven, the wrong color or blue, the correct color. Black is beautiful. <laughs> Where have you been? I, I'm not going to argue that. That's fair. $9,999 at your local Yamaha dealership. Thank you, Steve. Buy one today. There you go. Congrats on your new bike, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That work for you? It's got to happen.